And if you don't know, let me tell you a few things I saw. The last story I'm going to tell you here from the Bible, I, I can't even believe it's... It, I don't even know if I should say it or not. It's, it's alarming. It was... It crushed me. For about 15 minutes after I finished, I lied down and I just held myself. I was in pain. Antagonists don't really like you as much. You, you might be gentle. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't. They will crush you and the Holy Spirit. And the reason I say that is not because the Holy Spirit will leave them to crush you, but you have to take them serious to destroy them. Otherwise, they will not let you rest. If you push them back today, they come back tomorrow. It's better you just send them to permanent extinction. I don't want to live life on these uh, uh, up and down times. Today you have money. Tomorrow you are in pain. You are borrowing next tomorrow. I don't even know what, what does that mean. Today you have good that you celebrate good that hallelujah, my body is free. Then under this month again, they tell you you have one uh, that bed outside that bed, whatever, somewhere. And then you say, I read my Then you come back again, you have another leg pain. Whoa, is that living? How do I have one life to live? To breathe just once? And I'm in pain with it. What kind of life is that? Because some people are saying things behind you. Because some people are causing you some heavy antagonizing spirit. You have to destroy them. How I wish Abel knew that Cain was a problem to him. He would have run away. Nobody could raise Abel up. No matter the punishment that Cain received, it's not a replica to the body that is gone. And why? Cain only killed Abel because of jealousy. Who is an antagonist? People that are jealous. Genesis chapter 4 verse 8. The Bible says, And Cain talked with Abel his brother. He talked with him. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his blood, brother, and slew him. I don't know. It's like I'm turning to Ibo. I wanted to say brother. I say brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. He spoke to his brother like a friend, but he was an antagonist. If Abel only knew... The dreams of Abel, the good heart of Abel. Can you imagine if Abel gave back to children? They killed him. His children would have been good because he would have trained them well. Now the, let me say it in my language, the Ganico, that is a bad gain, that killed someone, now went and gave back. And later he said the world is bad. Our world no go bad. The grandfather where we get, all of them, no, no, what did they do? Adam doing you, Cain still gone doing you, and they are delivering. And all of us now, we now came from that Thank God for Jesus. And that's how you see human beings are evil. Very evil. Antagonists can be your blood. And you will not know. Because they can slide under the bed. They can sleep in your bedroom. They can wear your clothes. So you won't know. Unless you quickly pray to God to help you fish them out. And don't let them destroy you. Because even if God punish, you know the way we talk, we serve a big I, I don't want a after death. Mm -mm. I know they do my own like that. It's better I fire you, I stay alive. Eh, even if it's an error, you die. Let me stay here. Hallelujah. How about Goliath? Goliath was also another form of antagonist. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 9 to 10. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants? Goliath is telling the people of Israel. The fighters of Israel, Saul, that look, any one of your people that can fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servant. He said, but if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall he be a servant and serve us. Goliath was a Philistine. But verse 10 was very simple. And the Philistine said, I defy unto you all the armies of Israel today. Give me a man that we may fight together. Then verse 11, this is where I guess it's interesting. When Saul and all of Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. <laughs> fight as well. They were afraid. Because now he's saying, don't let all of us be fighting. This fight, fight, fight is. Let's just make this rule. Give me your best man. Glad's about nine feet tall. I don't even know. The whole of this roof is what? <laughs> Sorry about it. Me and six feet. So you put like my size on my head. That's Goliath with big arm. His hand is like, we will own. Then I said, just send someone to me. Let us fight. If he kills me, all of us will be your slaves. If I kill him, all of you will be our slaves. 
And so knows that this man will kill whoever we send. That's like, who are we? We are like this near him. He was molesting them. He was doing everything, antagonizing their God. But we know how the story ended. One small boy called David was a end to him. And that is how God will end your antagonist today. In the name of Jesus. This a lot of antagonists in the Bible. A lot. A lot. You know Mordecai. You know the what Delilah did. You know Nebuchadnezzar. You know Haman. Herod the Great. You know Judas Iscariot. Plenty, plenty antagonists. That's why I know that there is plenty antagonists. People you work together. People you go to the market together. All of them. But this one I said shocked me. Was the Levite who abandoned his concubine. I'm not going to read because it's a long story. Judges chapter 19. Maybe you should see too. Feel what I felt. Hallelujah. The short story here was the man fell in love. He's a man from Ephraim. He fell in love with a woman who the Bible referred to as concubine. I'm still going to look deeper into it because it should be a wife, not concubine. But maybe the language they had then was that. And he went to ask for the woman to come and live with him. So he traveled to the woman's house, met his father. So the father of the woman was happy, like, oh, okay, finally you want to marry my daughter. And he said, okay, wait for a few days, just marry and stay with us. And they were having a nice time, they would eat, they would see. Each time the man says, I want to leave, which is the Levite man, the, uh, the father of the so-called concubine would tell him, don't go yet now, okay, go tomorrow. After tomorrow, he said, don't go yet now, okay, go in the evening. You know, I think he, the man enjoyed the company of the man. And then after a while, the man just said, Whoa, well, I'm going, Baba. And then took the wives or concubine, the Bible calls him, and his own servants, and they left. Now, because they are Jews, they couldn't stay in some places. And then they say, Okay, let's just keep moving. And then they got to a town where they could rest. Nobody took them because they were late. It was later in the evening. So nobody wanted to take strangers. And they stayed in the city park. A man saw them there and took them inside his own home and once the city people saw that the man took the Levite man and the woman home they came to the house of this new man that took them home they knocked the door boo, 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 boo. ferociously guess what they came to ask they said give us the men so we can sleep with them they were gays ah now now said no they are my visitor that's no way you can he said okay I will release the man who kept those guys. Said I will release my virgin daughter to you. Go and ah, Omo. Make I not just talk against her. I mean, my, ah, me, I, I, that day probably I will die. I will give you my daughter, to virgin daughter, to go and do what with because you came and knocked my door. Ah. And they were insisting they said no that they want the men. They want to rape the men. Man to man, you want to rape man that is a visitor in the country. So the man was like, okay, we give you all the women in this house. Just leave the men alone. So they agreed and they now, including the new concubine for the Levites man. So they sent out all the women to them. The Bible recorded it to Judges chapter 19. Just read it. The Bible said, and they raped them throughout the night, the women. The men slept. Ah, Lord, will not let me have stupid men as uh, friends or husband or father anywhere. You, they took, you sent your women out to be raped and then you went back to sleep. And in the morning, early morning, when those ones are done with them, they left. And the wife of this concubine, the concubine of this Levite, could not even walk inside the house. The Bible said, when she was coming back from outside, she slumped at the door. She could not, she didn't have strength to get inside. And then it was morning. The Levite man woke up. That was how I know they went back to sleep. The Levite man woke up and came outside and saw her there and said, oh yeah, let's go. The woman could not walk. So the servants helped, in, helped the woman and took them on the donkey and they go back to their home. Get what? You know, at that point, I'm like, okay, what a relief. At least 
When they got home, the Levite man took out cutlass and cut the woman into 12 places by himself. And then he distributed the 12 bodies to the 12 areas of Israel. Because he said they have raped her. Some woman who got raped on your behalf, she was trying to protect you because the man said it would be an abomination for a man to be raping a man, at least if he's man woman. They will term it rape. It will not have incest to it. And then you now think you have done wrong. How many times have you stood in line for people and they turn back to backbite you? How many times as a woman have you spent your love on a man and he disappointed you heavily that you might not even be able to recover from it? It was a story. I'm still going to read that story again because I never even understand everything I read that, that morning. I'm like, what was this? Jaguajantis? I don't understand this. How can a human being be that cruel? I yes, send the woman back to her father. So the father who already now loved you to the point not letting you go that he enjoyed your company, you have now killed his son. I'll be your daughter, his daughter. And these things happen in real life. You see people molest wives. You see people molest brothers. You have helped this your friend. I remember those days. My dad collected the uh, gratuity everything. Gave to a friend who was traveling out for about 14 years. That one, no even call him. We, we were struggling with school fees. We were always school fees. Every, we were at university. And because he gave the money. And my mother was like, ah, this is the adult. You have children. You are packing all our money to give your friend in university. Because he's going abroad. That time I am buying anything abroad like this. You can just come him easily. Hmm. People are antagonists. To the level you can't even imagine. But I want you to pray to God of gods. Who doesn't like antagonists to bring you out? Father, deliver me. Deliver me from every antagonist. Deliver me from all their plots. In the name of Jesus. I don't want my life to end. I don't want my life to be destroyed. Lord, deliver me from every antagonist. In the name of Jesus. Deliver me, Lord. In Jesus' mightiest name we have prayed. Let events of my life, let them be divinely set to avoid the path and format of antagonists. In the name of Jesus, let the events of my life, let it be divinely set so I will not follow their path, so they will not even see me. In the name of Jesus, let the events of my life be divinely set. In the name of Jesus, to avoid the path and format of antagonists. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mightiest name we are praying. Oh Lord, heal my soul, heal my spirit from the impact of previous attacks of these enemies. Lord, heal my soul, heal my soul, heal my spirit from the impact of previous attack of antagonists. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mightiest name we are praying. I receive freedom from this moment. I receive freedom over physical and spiritual antagonists. I receive freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom indeed I receive. Freedom indeed I receive. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name we are praying. No person or spirit will prevail against me. No person or spirit will be able to turn away my plan and will. In the name of Jesus. No person or spirit will prevail against me. No person will prevail against my plan. No person or spirit will be able to disrupt my will. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name we are praying. Embargoes placed on my path by antagonists, I command you to be removed, be removed totally in the name of Jesus. Every embargo placed on my way by antagonists, every embargo placed on my way by words of backbiters, I decree you are removed today in the name of Jesus. Be removed, be removed, be removed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name, we are praying. Father, destroy the strongholds of these antagonists. Destroy the strongholds of my enemies in the name of Jesus. Their strongholds let it become porous. Let it be destroyed, totally destroyed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name, we are praying. Every monitoring spirit giving update to the kingdom of darkness about my life, I command you to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Monitoring spirit on my life, monitoring spirit over my ministry and finance, giving updates to the spiritual world. I decree you to be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be 
destroy in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name, we are praying. By your power, Lord, separate me from my antagonist. Oh, separate me from my antagonist. People blocking my destiny, separate me and them. In the name of Jesus, I want to fulfill destiny. Lord, separate me. Separate me. Separate me from destiny blockers. Separate me, Lord, from my antagonist. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name, we are praying.